Hello, Auburn High School parents and guardians. My name is Jeff Gardner. I'm the principal at Auburn High School. And I've put together this video for you to give you a little bit of understanding of where we're at right now. Today is uh, Wednesday, January 27th. Um, we are in the middle of our finals week for quarter two. And we are just about ready to embark on quarter three beginning next Tuesday. So I put together a little slideshow to kind of show you where we're at right now. And as we transition into quarter three, what that transition entails as we anticipate, um, you know, returning kids back into the building. Um, we've already had, I'm gonna move over to presentation mode here. We've already had uh, some of our student athletes starting to show up to uh, Troy Field over Memorial Stadium. And they have been taking part in, you know, very controlled outdoor activities uh, to get them in condition. Um, we're hoping to get that going too. Um, but what I've done, I've put together a slide presentation, like I said, to kind of show you where we're at and what we're doing um, as we move forward. And there aren't a lot of big details in this, but it might help you get a little bigger picture of where we're at. So let me go ahead and get started here. Um, so this is kind of a mid-year distance learning um, report. And this comes from the data that we pull up weekly, if not daily. And I could say, I'm generalizing here, students are regularly attending school for the most part. It's something I keep a really close watch on. Our weekly average attendance is typically between 79% and 85%. So we have basically, for most of the kids, we have 19 opportunities during a regular week for them to check in with their teachers. Some of them, most of them are doing it during their Google Meet times. Um, and some of them, you know, some of the kids are working, so they may have to do it after hours. It's an alternative way to do it, but there's a lot of flexibility with that. So the average weekly daily attendance is in that lower 80% range, which means if students have 19 opportunities to check in, um, most kids are doing at least 15, 16 opportunities each week. And I would like to see our kids maybe set some goals for themselves, um, maybe trying to up that up um, one more class or two more classes as we get into quarter three. Another thing we notice is the younger the students are, um, the more they attend. Our ninth graders have the best attendance right now. They're about at 87 percent. And then our upper class, uh, they're a little more flatlined. Our seniors have made a nice trend lately, kind of getting a little comeback. Um, but for the most part, we understand that older students appear to have probably more non-school related responsibilities. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is how the students are doing as a school. On-track passing rates have been about 7.5% lower than before COVID-19. I'm talking about just this year, okay, because last spring when we went to COVID, all students had to do was just check in with their teachers or we had to have some evidence that they were trying to do something and they all got a passing grade. And that was kind of the state's do no harm period as we were all, you know, pretty much in uh, academic and social and uh, health crisis trying to figure this whole thing out. Well, it's different now. There's accountability pieces and kids do need to show up. Uh, prior to this fall, um, and I didn't count last spring, um, but I looked at all of our semesters minus last spring since 2016 and at Auburn High School, we've had just over an 85% rate of kids passing at the end of each semester. Um, we still work hard to work with kids, try to recoup those credits through APEC, summer school, um, uh, things that their teachers work with them with. And what we found is during this quarter or this semester, and these are only the first three periods of the day because we still aren't done with this semester yet, we have uh, just over almost a 78% passing rate. And I, I would think that during a worldwide pandemic um, with all the things our kids are challenged with and families, um, I feel good about that. I, I don't feel good that anytime I have a student fail a class, but I think despite everything else going on, um, I feel pride in that number and I want that number to continue going up. So. Um, I, I would say good for us as a school. Um, each individual student is their own story. So hopefully as parents, guardians, you're working with them and supporting them the best ways that you can. AHS is offering more academic interventions than ever before, okay? We have after-school tutoring. We have Troy time. Uh, beginning 
not this coming week, the first quarter week of quarter three, but when we get to that second week, uh, February 5th or 6th, February, I'm sorry, February 8th or 9th, when we're in Troy time, we're really going to focus on students that earned an E grade, um, which is that 50 to 60% grade not quite passing during Troy time for two weeks. They'll be working on getting those grades up so they can recoup quarter three credit. Um, we have after school tutoring, which uh, we probably could use a few more kids there. Some days it's seven kids, some days it's two. Lately it's been in the teens, maybe even 20s, but in a regular school year, we would have 60 kids in the library, uh, 30 kids in the library fairly, fairly consistently. So we wanna see more of that. And then teachers, um, we've been able to free up a few of our teachers to do interventions in class with students and same thing with paraeducators. Uh, we've released more adult help in the classroom during the school day too. So we're trying some new things and, and, and everybody's really excited about it and, and being as flexible as they can to meet the needs of kids. And I'd say lastly, this has been hard on everyone. Um, I never want to forget about that. It's been really hard on everybody, but again, I'm very proud um, for what we've done. Uh, looking ahead to quarter three and four, uh, returning is 100% dependent upon COVID-19 rates, and I mean for back in the building. Um, I know before the winter break, we were edging towards like a thousand cases of COVID in South King County, Auburn proper, out of 100,000. Um, I believe the CDC or the health department has set the standard we have to be below 200 and we have to show that for at least two weeks. And the last I heard, um, we were right around 400 right now. So we're still a little bit of ways away. Uh, the elementary students will return first unless something changes in, you know, the CDC or the health department's protocols. But that's, that's what the target is. So everything's dependent on COVID-19. Um, AHS is working on all of our COVID-19 safeguards for entering our school, the learning spaces, classrooms, um, how we'll set up meals, moving around the building and exiting our school. Now, here's what's really great. There's <clears throat> about 120 school districts in our state right now that have already started bringing kids back on campus. Some of them have been doing it for a few months now. Some of them have just started. So we have some good models to draw upon. Um, and the district's doing that study also, along with individual principals. So we're taking everything that the CDC and the Washington State Health Department gives us as our major guidelines, and then we kind of customize it for our own schools. But we're starting that process. Um, we've been at that process for a while. One of the things your kids will notice if they are returning to the building is we're gonna have green stripes all the way down the middle of every hallway. And that means uh, just a reminder to the kids to stay on the right side and. We know we don't have to put six foot markers all the way through the school. I mean, uh, our kids are pretty reasonable and very mature about that. So we're gonna ask them to socially distance. We'll probably have foot markers, you know, every 25 feet or four, so just to give them that reminder. And, and adults will be out in the halls too to kind of help them with that. Anyway, I don't wanna get too much into that because we'll have some videos later on um, as, as we get closer to that. Our quarter three and quarter four schedules have been created to fit a return to school slash online blended model. So adjustments had to be made. Okay, I wanna get into that a little bit here. Um, so the preparation is, as you probably already know, the school district returned to school through a blended model. That's what they're developing. The outcome has been we have a hybrid A and we have a hybrid B schedule in, at Auburn High School and for all the high schools for that matter. Elementaries, as you probably know, if you have elementary kids, they're looking more at a AM, PM online model. We're looking at a hybrid A, which means students would come to school physically Tuesdays and Thursdays, or hybrid B, they would come Wednesdays and Fridays. Monday would be totally um, online, and for the kids that are choosing the AOL, um, Auburn Online, they're gonna be doing online all the time. So um, that's an interesting way to think about it. When we first started kind of building our models uh, to return kids to school, we kind of went with 80, percent of the kids returning, 20 percent staying home. And as we started hearing from schools across the country, it was more like 60, 40, 50, 50, um, and for whatever reason. But where it came out in our, our data is 53 uh, percent of our students will return to one of those hybrids and 47 percent will return to Auburn online learning, will basically stay what they're doing right now. 
The other thing we had to consider is all the different work groups. Um, we have teachers, we have office workers, custodians, transportation, child nutrition, paraeducators, et cetera. And as the district works with each of the different labor groups, we have to make sure that everyone's safety is taken into account, um, equity, and we want to do everything we can to preserve learning, of course, because that's that's our product, right? Um, and agreements are still being finalized. So I can't really speak to those because I'm not at those bargaining tables, but I know that our all of our labor groups are really concerned about kids and their education. So um, that's about all I can say about that. The other thing, and I think this is probably most important for right now, uh, the preparation is we had to create schedules that will work despite all of the variables, okay? Our AHS counselors are hand scheduling over 1,700 students to fit the needs of graduation and then student choice. So just think about that. They had to make sure kids fit in what their graduation requirements are, um, and then any type of, of elective choices they took, they wanted to preserve that uh, because with the way the scheduling is working, um, there's, there's constraints with that. So, um, versus all of us being back in the building physically, all of us, um, it created a few more obstacles. So some of the students' alternatives had to be pulled up and uh, they'll have a little bit different um, electives than maybe they thought. And, you know, we've been blaming COVID-19 since the beginning. So if they're upset about that, just tell them to blame it on the virus. When we add in all of the above variables, there was a detailed oriented plan requiring an overage of 350 extra hours of scheduling just outside of the regular school day. So our, our counselors have been kind of been at this and been working hard. Um, the things off to the right over here, learning and content will prevail. New relationships will be created. Some of our students who might have, you know, this teacher for math might have a different teacher than they had quarter one but that's an opportunity to learn from somebody new, build a new relationship. Uh, many students will have a new um, uh, quarter three to four teachers, so just be prepared for that. Um, once students do receive their schedules, um, and they'll be available uh, February 1st, Monday, it's a non-school day, um, but you'll be able to get into family access, student access to find out what their schedules are. And just know this, changes will be very few. They're all gonna have to be based on graduation requirements. Okay, so we gotta really play a fine line on that and uh, just make sure our kids know that. But we're gonna preserve learning. We're gonna preserve the content they need to have to graduate. And um, I guess our next hierarchy would be, we would probably be giving seniors preference over juniors, juniors over sophomores. And that's something we've always done because we always knew the younger kids had another opportunity to maybe take an elective class that um, an older kid had access to. So that's another way we prioritize. Um, <clears throat> setting goals for quarter three and quarter four, I wanna let you know what the district's priorities are and we've taken these on in the most, most robust ways at Auburn High is safety, equity, learning, relationships, collaboration and accountability. Um, the two things I put and highlighted there in yellow, uh, attendance and new relationships are things that I'm hoping that you can talk to your students about because um, attendance is important. When you think we have about a low 80%, upper 70% attendance rate, and that kind of correlates with what our passing rates are. When I go back to the regular school years, when we're doing this fully brick and mortar, there's a definite correlate, okay? so. If you see that your students are slacking a little bit, um, motivate them, encourage them. Um, we know it's hard, uh, but kids can definitely do hard things. They prove it to us all the time. And then the other one is relationships and new relationships. Yeah, they're gonna get to know some new teachers and our teachers are gonna get to know some different students. So we wanna look at that as a positive. We know that when kids go to college or you know, whatever um, they're going off to, whether that's a, a trade or, or work, they're going to meet all kinds of different people. They're going to have to really learn how to work with different personalities and vice versa. And I guess if any year is the most like attending a college at a high school, you know, this would be that year because you're going to see a lot of different uh, faces of teachers in college. It'll be professors and instructors. So anyway, I think that's all I have for right now. I would anticipate once we get closer to reopening, um, you'll get another video from us. It's going to be more safety based and, uh, I hope to hear from you guys if you have any questions and, uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching us. Thanks for listening.